Since we just spent a little bit of time on the command line, I want to take a minute to first validate any fears or discomfort that you have around the command line, and secondly, introduce you to the main commands that we're going to use, and actually we used most of those in the previous video. So first of all, if you have any kind of resistance to the command line, you're not alone. If you haven't used it a lot, and you don't use it on a regular basis, then chances are it's going to feel uncomfortable, a little strange, whenever you hop on it. And there's a few reasons for this. The first is that everything on the command line runs off of your memory. So as we sit here looking at this command line, there's really nothing to give us any context about what we should do, what commands are available to use. We have to know, in our minds, exactly what to do next. If you contrast this with a GUI, or a graphical user interface, I'm going to jump over to one called SmartKit, which we'll be using throughout this video series, then you have a whole lot of information here to indicate what features are available and how you would trigger those features. You see we have sync, pull, push, and we know that we can click these in order to trigger these. We might not know what they mean yet, but this helps. This helps give us context. And you also see that there are colors being used to kind of indicate different functionality, and that allows our eyes to quickly identify what some functionality might be just based on colors. Back at the command line, we don't have any of that. If we do get help, for example, we need to know this command to begin with. We know that if we're in a graphical user interface, we can usually go up to the menu and click on help and be able to search that way. But here we actually have to type in help. We have to know that that's a command. If we type enter, then we get a list of some useful features in Git, but we still don't know a lot about these features. Another thing that makes working on the command line tricky is that all of the conventions that you use to navigate your operating system, to open up files, to edit text files, those are all tricks and tools that you've learned over time, and they're consistent across all programs. Well, the command line is like a whole different operating system that way. The way you get around is through a list of particular commands, and the way you work with files and modify them is totally unique and requires using the keyboard exclusively without the help of a mouse or a tablet. So for example, at a couple of points in this series, we're going to be modifying some text via the command line. And the command line has programs for modifying text files just like our operating system does. In Windows, for example, we have Notepad. In Mac, we have TextEdit. On the command line, there are a number of tools. By default, Mac uses VI, but there's also Vim and Nano, and depending on what system you're using, and sometimes it's a little hard to tell which one you're on, you'll use a different set of commands to get around. Let me demonstrate really quick. I'm gonna use a command called git commit, and then I'm passing the parameter amend. And this command we'll use later, it allows us to modify the commit message of our last commit. I'm gonna hit enter. This actually opens up the program VI, but there's nowhere that says that we're using VI. Also, it's hard to tell if we're looking at backscroll or if we're actually doing something else. If we use the arrow keys, we'll see that we can actually move this cursor around through the various points of this message. And if we try to type, we can't adjust the message. Instead, we actually have to press I which will put us into insert mode, which we can see down here. And from this point, we can change the message. So if we wanted to change it to first ever commit, then we can do that. But now we need to save the change, which is actually pretty tricky. The first thing we have to do is press escape, which will change the mode out of insert. And now we can issue a command by pressing shift and then the colon key to get colon and then W, which will save the changes that we made, and Q, which will quit out of the program. So we've typed colon WQ, and then we can press enter, and we get our change. Now even though I can do that from memory, there's still a ton of commands that I need references for, and there's a, a huge number of utilities that I have no idea how to use yet. And for most of us who are just kind of making their way through the command line and using it as needed, that's the way it's going to be. Okay, so hopefully any fears or discomfort you have around the command line have been validated. But 
The command line comes with its benefits too, and they're actually pretty huge. One of the big benefits is that the command line version of a program is consistent across different platforms. And so this means that if you have a development site on your computer running either Windows or Mac or Linux, that you can then interface with a Linux server in the same way that you work with the program on your own computer. So you can access Git via the command line, for example, on a production site and be able to run all of the commands that you use on your local site. Whereas if you depend on a graphical user interface for it, then you won't have those tools on the remote site and you could end up feeling lost. So you won't get the practice on the command line that you need in order to run the production side of your site. A second benefit is that it's harder to mess things up. So for example, if we go back to SmartGit, you see we have all of these tools available to us on the repository that we just created. We can sync, we can pull, we can push, we can switch, we can merge. And if we click these, then we'll get the dialog box that allows us to go through that process. But this is before we even know what sync means or pull means or push means. So we're able to click something, maybe suspecting that it's what we need, but we could end up actually causing a huge problem in our repository as a result. Whereas if we're working on the command line, so far we only know a few commands and we know what they do, and we can be pretty confident that if we use those, we're not going to hose anything. And the third big benefit of the command line, which you'll see as we get into using Drush later on in the series, is that it's very efficient. So as long as you know the right commands, you can do things very quickly. So ultimately you get a few things out of learning the command line and getting comfortable on it. The first of which is portability. You can use the same tools on any computer on any platform. Secondly, you get stability. You don't run into the issue of using tools that you don't know or understand yet. And finally, you get higher productivity. You're able to get things done faster and more efficiently.